Well, hello, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody doing? This is Tasha Cole, also known as TC Knows. You are listening to the podcast, Break the Cycle with TC Knows. No, I do not know everything. However, I will share with you what I do know. And today, I have a wonderful person that is going to be sharing with us her journey and I'm not going to go into it because I want her to introduce herself to you. But before we go there, I just want everybody to know that this podcast is created and was created for individuals that want to receive the help and heal and transform their lives through words and solution, through the power of words and solution. And that's what, will be, that's what you will hear today. You will hear the power of words and solutions because people are in this never-ending cycle but today i have a wonderful guest who is going to share with you her cycle that she has broken so i'm going to allow her to introduce herself to you all because she can do it better than i can hi thank you tasha very much um my name is cheryl stevens i um the cycle we're talking about uh, tasha's talking about uh with me is um, the cycle of grief and depression after losing my husband two and a half years ago. I um, we can get into the story a little bit, but I have a podcast, Back to Living. There's uh, life after loss. I also work part time at a um, nonprofit that helps women and children coming out of crisis. Give them a hand up. It's not a shelter. It's totally different than a shelter. And I also have a well, actually, two part time. I'm opening an Etsy shop for my crafts, and I also am a Synergence uh, distributor. And most people know Lipsense instead of Synergence. But so, in two and a half years, I have become very, very busy. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? That's a good thing because. A lot of people, when they go through grief or when they go through losing a loved one, they just have a standstill. But before we even really get into the meat of everything, I want everybody just to get to know a little bit about you, Cheryl. You know, so tell us. I know you said something about crafts, and I love to craft. So that's another <laughs> thing that you and I have in common besides yeah. being podcasters. <laughs> but I want to know, what is your favorite color? What's your favorite color? My favorite color is any shade of blue. <gasps> really? <laughs> yes. See, I yes. knew it was something special about you. That is my favorite color. Any uh -huh. color blue. Awesome. I love blue. It's like blue is just, it just does something to me when I look at it. I yes. just love it. I just love it. it. It's so what, calling to me. Yes, I agree. I totally agree. So what's your favorite food? Don't say pizza. Oh, no. <laughs> um, besides chocolate. <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably Mexican food. Mexican Tex -Mex. food. Not Tex Mex. Well, you know I'm a what? Texan. So hey, <laughs> I had my husband, he made us some quesadillas last night with shrimp in it and Ooh. mushrooms. And he had green peppers and onions in his. I just had onions in mine with mushrooms. And I mean, my husband, he loves to cook. He really did it up last night. He had me a little side of salsa and some guacamole and some oh. tortilla chips. And I was like, oh, yes. Yes. It was great. My kind of meal. Yes. <laughs> I've not done it with shrimp. I usually have either chicken or, or shredded beef, but that sounds good. Yeah, it was good. Shrimp is good. It was yeah, my husband, my husband was a cooker as well. He did most of the cooking. Um, and he was so good at it. He really didn't use recipes he could taste the spices that was in something and try to recreate it and um he was awesome at it we always wanted him to open a restaurant but um just never got around to it wow wow so I, this is something and i'm glad you said something about your husband loving the cook and not being able to get around to opening up the restaurant so this next question is what was you and your husband's favorite song that you all would dance to? You're gonna, not, well, gonna believe this, but neither one of us danced. I was raised Southern Baptist, and as a kid, 
didn't dance. So I never learned to dance. And it wasn't my husband's, but favorite songs was probably pretty much anything Elvis. In fact, that was one of the um, disputes we talked about quite frequently because while we were dating, he had a chance to go buy some tickets to see Elvis that came to Fort Worth. And his friend, uh, Will, gave him the money to go get them. And he says, I'll buy yours if you'll go get the tickets. Well, I didn't know about that until probably 10 years after we had been married, that he went to see Elvis and didn't even ask me if I wanted to go. <laughs> so, he just assumed yeah. that you didn't want to go, huh? Uh, so, but yeah, anything Elvis. In fact, one of the songs that... Um, that was sung, what was played, it wasn't sung, at um, his service was Elvis's version of Amazing Grace. Wow. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. So, after, lead us up to this point. What, what brought you, I know that, you know, your journey, you know, the grief, the last two years and how to start living, but just give us a vivid picture of what it was like for you, you know, from starting point to now. What was that journey like? Well, I have to go back to January 2010. That is when I lost my father on January 15th. Mm. I stayed with my mom a couple of weeks, came home, and I had been married 30-something years at this time, and my husband had never gone to the doctor, would not go, would not go. So on a Saturday night, I got home Saturday morning on Saturday night, he was pacing, uh, he was watching a football game in the den, which I didn't want to watch, so I was watching TV in the bedroom, just relaxing because I was tired, and he was pacing between the two the den in the bedroom, the den in the bedroom, and he wasn't saying anything. Well, he finally stopped and said, I think I need to go see a doctor. And of course, I shot up. Uh, it's like, what do you mean you need to go see a doctor? Because he never, ever wanted to go see a doctor. He had a really bad experience as a child with his mom and a doctor right before she passed away, and he just, he did not like doctors. So... It's like, if you think you need to go see a doctor, we're going to the emergency room now. So we went to the emergency room, did some testing, came home, and he says, I know what this is, and I'm ready. I'm ready to go home. It's like, so you're not even going to fight. He said, mm, I'm, I'm ready. I know what's going to happen, and I'm ready. It's like, okay. Okay. Um, but when I asked him, you're not even going to fight, I think that it probably triggered something in him. And um, after several surgeries, chemo, tons of chemo, um, radiation treatment. Radiation had damaged uh, the ureters between his bladder and his kidney. And he had to have stents put in that he was going to have to have the rest of his life. He had to have them changed every four to six months. Mm. Uh -huh. And that went on for about four years. Um, and treatment after treatment and saw him get worse and worse and went through trial after trial after trial. Um, it was tough because I worked full time. He couldn't work. So I needed to work to have the income and to have insurance. Um, I'm so thankful and we were so blessed we had insurance to help us. Um, so, I, yeah, the grieving started with my father passed away. And two weeks later, on February 5th, on his birthday, my husband's birthday, we found out that he had stage three cancer moving into stage four. Mm. So it just started this whole downward slide um, we had, I always tell people we had peaks and valleys. Every time God gave us, or we had bad news, God gave us something to hang on to. Um, my daughter got engaged, so we got, you know, excited for that. And then we had another bad lapse. And then um, my 
um, we were planning a wedding and then you know the wedding and then my son got engaged and there was that wedding and then babies grandbabies started coming so there was this high and low to this whole six-year period that he went through um, December 2015 I guess was our hour together our lowest point December 1st 2015 we went into the doctor and he had been going through trials and at this point he could barely walk we had to use a wheelchair and they said um we're sorry but there's nothing else to offer your bone marrow is totally destroyed you can never have chemo again mm. now we ask well what happens if he stays off of it will his bone marrow reproduce and they said yes the first ounce of chemo and it's gone again he just can't do it and my husband was super private, as you know, he didn't go to the doctor, but he never talked about his feelings. He just never did. The whole 40 plus years we were married, he never talked about his feelings. But that day, when they told him that, he kind of turned away from me, and he had tears coming down his face. And the nurse said, put her hand on his knee and patted it and says, okay, tell me what's going on right now. And he didn't want to look at me. I still tear up thinking about it. But he says, I'm kind of relieved. I, I didn't think I could take any more, and you just made that decision for me. Mm. I, I'm relieved. That was on December 1st of 2015. Um, my son's birthday was February 5th. Luckily, we had taken family pictures. We had someone come take family pictures February 1st at my house here uh, with the kids and the grandkids and us. Um, they had come and we had set up chairs in our backyard, so we helped him out there. That was February 1st. On February 15th is when he passed away. Wow. So we had December and January and part of February. February, really, he was um, on hospice. He, they had to keep him sedated because of all the pain meds had gone to his liver. They think the cancer had probably moved to his brain, uh, so it wasn't really him. So really, we had two months. We, you know, he brought the, they brought the grandkids over as much as they could, and his sister was here all the time. And uh, his best friend came in uh, from El Paso that last week and was here. My our kids and his best friend were here when he passed. Um, so I had them here, but the process of all of that after that. You're kind of numb you really you're moving from one thing to another and to the cemetery to plan things into the funeral home and then it's just constant chaos for a week and then people go home mm. and you're kind of left and you're in the house by yourself I had never lived by myself I got married when I was 19 I moved from home into with my husband, so I had never lived alone. Um, and I'm here by myself with the house that needs tons of repairs. Didn't want to get out of bed. Um, had uh, two dogs that were absolutely grieving because they love my husband. Um, I remember going to the grocery store for the first time that week and I walked around the grocery store for 30 minutes and walked out with milk and egg and eggs and bread because I didn't know what to buy to cook. I didn't feel like cooking. Um, my son helped me find someone and they did do some major repair work to my house. My foundation was, my, my den was leaning so we needed some major work. But um, while they did work, I closed the bedroom doors and stayed in the bed with my dog and that's what we did uh, when they started working in that part of the house I would come to the den and lay on the couch and watch TV and that's what I did you know no makeup no hair brushing lucky to get a shower it's just I didn't want to do anything I quit going to church mm -hmm. but going to Bible study I, I really I didn't want to see anybody uh, that's hard. I had been married just shy of 41 years. And 
that was two thirds of my life. And the way I was raised, you know, Southern Baptist, uh, back, got married 75. Um, our job was to kick, take care of the family and the kids. I did work outside of the house um, many years. I was home until um, my son was, our son was um, in third grade. My daughter had just turned four. I was home until then, but got to the point that money was, I had to go to work. Um, but I worked close, you know, three miles, six miles from the house. I didn't go far. I could always come home from lunch if, if I wanted to. And my kids didn't stay in daycare. They with, went with my husband because he started his own uh, landscape maintenance repair job. So they went with him. So we were always together as a family. We were always together. And then all of a sudden, you know, the kids are grown and gone. And my husband's gone. And my purpose is gone. What am I supposed to do now? I didn't. Um, and I struggled with that. God and I had a lot of conversations about that. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I, I had no drive. I had no ambition. I just, I really didn't want to do anything. I didn't go back to my job. I'd been in insurance for 40 plus years. I just didn't go back. Um, wow. wasn't interested, lost all interest in, in insurance. Like I said, I'd been in it 40 years. I was considered one of the experts in our area and didn't want to go back. And I had some really good friends from church. One of them in particular, she used to work for me also. I met her at church, but then she came to work for me a while. She would check in. She would email me. She would text message me. She would come by, send me cards. And um, I mean, I had gotten out during this time. I had gone out my daughter and son-in-law and my granddaughter had gone to Disney and they wanted me to go. I went, but it was like I was a robot there. I loved seeing it through my granddaughter's eyes, but, and I enjoyed it, but not like I should have for ever going the first time. It's like, I'm here. Well, I want to ask you, I wanna ask, you said a lot of things that really just, made me think of my mom's journey and you and I kind of briefly talked about that and in some of the things that you went through I seen her go through mm -hmm. so from a child's point of view when you were going through that did your son and your daughter ever come and talk to you or you know, try to get you to do things. And oh, yeah. did you reject them? You know, cause my mom, she rejected me. She locked herself in her room for a whole seven days. No, um, didn't reject them. They were around. They would call me. They'd come by and check on me. They'd bring the grandkids by. Uh, I would try to get out and go to their house. It was easier for me for them to come here. Cause I really didn't want to get out and get clothes on. And, um, but, they both were wonderful. They would come over and help with things at the house. But, um, you know, they always did that. So it wasn't something different, but they just did it a little more frequently. Uh, and I was glad to see them because if I hadn't seen them, it would have been months before I would have seen anybody besides the contractors that were here. Wow. Uh, so, no, I didn't reject them, but I seen what you said. I rejected everything else. You know, I wasn't angry with God. Uh, it's not why I quit going to church. I really just, I didn't know what to do anymore. I really just didn't know what to do. And people, the doctor, you know, um, put me on some depression medicine and you need to go to grief counseling and some other people, well, you need to try grief counseling. And finally I did that. Um, and it was, Every Sunday in the late afternoons, I went four times. Every time I came home crying and I didn't want to get out of bed the next day. And so I started count canceling and canceling. And finally the leader said, what's going on? It's like, I can't do that. I come home and don't want to get out of the bed the next day. I see other people thriving through that. I can't do it. And she finally told me, she goes, you're not ready for this yet 
you you will know if you're if and when you're ready for it. So I was thankful that she understood that that I wasn't ready and that wasn't the type of recovery I needed to go through. So, um, so let me ask you. This. Mm -hmm. And that's that's powerful what you're saying because we did not go through grief counseling at all. We did not go through it. It was mostly just family, talking to family, my mom and I having moments because it was just me and my mom and one of my dad's coworkers and you know, a young man that my mom and dad took in, he was there and my mom, my, my father's best friend. And I'm like, so how, how does that look to a person that, what would you say to them, Cheryl? What would you say to them that they've lost their loved one, whether it been a spouse or a parent or even a child? You tried to go to grief counseling, but you said every time you went to grief counseling, it just, you just cried and you just couldn't get out of the bed. So how do you know at that moment that you needed to break that cycle? How did you need to, how did you know when was it time? When were you ready to start going to grief counseling so you can start living again? Well, actually I never went back. Um, I knew I couldn't go because it was supposed to be helping you through the grief and it was keeping me in the grief. Ooh. I would relive it every time I went. You would relive it. And there were people in this group, the lady that led it lost her husband. Uh, there was someone that had, several that had lost children, uh, brothers, you know, parents. So there was a big, there was a group of diverse loss there. Um, but it was not helping me move forward. It kept me in that last week forever, it seemed like, because I think I would make progress and then I'd go right back to the same place. And I think I'd make, make progress for the week and then I'd end up right back in the same place, in the same situation, not wanting to get out of bed. Like, I can't do this. This is not for me. I just can't do this. Wow. And, um, it to break that depression and everything I was in it was in like December of 2016 this this one friend that I said that you know she used to work for me I met her at Bible study met her at church um still good friends um we talk quite frequently go to events together um like I said, she would call and check on me. And then one day I said, you know, I, honestly, I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I really feel lost because I had a purpose before and I don't have a purpose anymore. What's my purpose? And she said something that clicked on in my brain that kind of got the wheel started. She told me, you are still here. God is not through with you yet. So you still have a purpose. You just have to find it. But she said, she kept saying, you are still here. So God is not through with you. And that, I think, let me start thinking about other things. Um, because in about a month after that, um, I had started this part-time job, Gate House. I had signed up to be a distributor for Cinegens, and I was getting out of the house and I was meeting people and talking to people. And I don't, I think if someone would have told me, you still have a purpose, you're still here, before that, or even do it during when I was in those few weeks of grief counseling, I don't think I would have listened to them because I just, I wasn't ready. And I think, most people will get to a point that, uh, and it can be, it looks different from everyone. It took Sandra telling me that, but it, you kind of know your mind, God, that spirit kind of speaks to you like, okay, you need to hear this now. You know, it's been said before, but now's the time to listen to it and let's start 
let's start doing something slow. You know, we can start out slow and see how it goes. And slowly, uh, this quiet, shy little lady here that liked to be in the kitchen for the parties to do everything for everybody and didn't want to be in the front of everybody. I have working part time. I am. Um, I have a business. I have to be in front of people to sell the product, doing parties and all of that. And now a podcast and all of these interviews and everything I'm doing. There is no way a year, you know, two years, even a year ago, I would have been doing it. It's just <laughs> um, so it's just started this little roller coaster that uh, I don't know where the end of it is. I can't see the end, but I know I'm going forward. <laughs> and, and even with that, a mutual friend of ours, Ms. Kim White, she said to yes. me in my journey in the beginning of it, she said to me, she said, you're going to have to slow down to speed up. I was like, what does that mean? But now I understand because once you need to give, we need to give ourselves time to slow down enough to see yeah. the journey so we can document it because when it speeds up, we're not going to have time to really see all of the steps and all of the processes or all of the events that has taken place up to the yes. point that we are at now. So Absolutely. with that being said, you have given our listeners a lot, a lot to think about. I mean, from the time that you were in the house, you didn't want to go anywhere. You was like, sometimes if I even would take a shower, no makeup, no brush in my hair, because a lot of people go through that. They don't talk about those things. And a lot of people, right. and see some widows or widowers, well, we're just going to say widows because we, they, and I'm, I'm just learning from what you're sharing with us, and what my mom and what I see my mom go through, for women to just like stop, that's like stopping the whole world. That's like stopping yes, the whole women, world. Well, the women are doers. I mean, they're, I think, I don't want to say bread, but this is what we do. We take care of the house, we take care of the family, we take care of the kids, we take care of the shopping and the laundry and the cooking and everything. We... I think that is just part of who we are. And right. then when you have no one to do that for, it's like you, you stopped in your tracks. There's just like, I, you don't know how to take that next step. You don't know which foot to move forward first. It, it's right. And your mom, yeah, I'm sure she went through most of this or even, you know, something totally different, but, um, Everyone grieves differently. I did learn that. Um, I, I still have moments two and a half years later. I mean, it's been rainy for a week here at Sunshine today, but um, when it's rainy and I can't get out of the house and, you know, go out and sit in the yard or do anything like that, even mow my yard, it's like you're sitting in this house and it's like, okay. So, you know, I just. So how do we, and I'm going to ask you this, and because we, we are getting ready to wrap it up. Okay. But how, what would you say to that person? What would you say to that widow that is grieving and how to start living again? How to start living? What would you say to them? There is one thing you can do that you don't have to act on it now, but it will give you something to look forward to. Think about something that you've always wanted to do. You don't have to do it now, but start writing it down and planning it. Um, I started planning and I, I need to go back to it. Um, I like doing crafts. We talked about that earlier. That was part of my therapy because I can wrap my mind around that craft I'm doing and don't have to think about anything else. So that's what I did, but I would do them and pack them away and do them and pack them away. But it's like, okay, I need to sell this stuff. I need to do a craft show, but I want to put on the craft, the event, the vendor event show. I don't, I want to participate, but I want to create it and I want to plan it and, and all of that. So I started just little notes. So this can be in the future, 
and I have something to look forward to down the future when I'm ready to actually implement it, but it gives you something to look forward to. Yeah. And also one thing I did that I never believed in, but if you have a journal, just write down your feelings that day. Even if it's one or two sentences, just write them down. It gets them out of your head and on that paper. And then you can go back and read and say, oh, look how this is changing a little bit, you know, wow. because I read some of the things I wrote back then. It's like, that doesn't even sound like me. I, it's my handwriting, but I don't remember writing this and I don't, it doesn't sound like me, but I can see through going back and reading those that, um, how much in grief I was and how slowly that started changing. And I could see the blessings and the sunshine again. Well, with that being said, you have that person, that individual that you just talked to, they're going to know that if they're not journaling, they're going to start journaling. I hope so. Because that's going to help them. And so it's tell them. Yeah, it's for you. It's not for anyone but you. Right. So tell the people how they can get in contact with you because your podcast is like going to explode in an excellent, I mean, in an excellent, in a good way, it's going to explode because it's going to reach a lot of women that are widows and they have lost their spouses. So tell them, tell the listeners how they can get in contact with you on your social media platforms. Social media. Um, my name is Champagne Beauty by Cheryl, and it's C-H-E-R-Y-L on Facebook and Instagram. Um, message me, uh, email me. The email is champagnebeautybycheryl at gmail.com. The podcast, uh, you can leave messages on there as well as Back to Living, There's Life After Loss. Right now it's on Spotify and Stitcher, and I'm waiting on iTunes approval. So. Uh, I will be branching out as, as they um, approve them. So, um, yeah, it's Champagne Beauty by Cheryl. And um, that's another conversation on how I came up with that name. But um, <laughs> uh, we can do that at some other time. But, um, yeah, okay. you can message me, email me. Um, all my contact information is on there. Well, thank you so much, Cheryl. And everybody, this is Tasha Cole, also known as TC Knows. Break the cycle with TC Knows. No, I do not know everything. However, I will share with you what I do know. And today we have shared with you grief, how to start living with Cheryl Stevens. You've heard it here on the podcast that you can get in contact with her through Facebook and through Instagram. To connect with myself, you can contact me at tcknowsbrand at gmail.com. You can also connect with us through Facebook at TC Knows Brand. You can also connect with me on Instagram at underscore TC Knows. And you can see everything, YouTube, same, TC Knows. iTunes, Spotify, everything is there for your listening ears. Well, we thank you so much, listeners. If you are joining us for the first time, thank you so much. If you are returning, thank you so much. There's a lot that needs to be broken in our lives. And I will be honest with you. I am breaking those cycles right along with you. Cheryl, thank you so much for sharing with us. You've said a lot in this podcast. And I believe that there is going to be somebody that's going to reach out to you and that you're going to be interviewing them. Well, thank you. well we have done our thing today just i've learned a lot just from listening to her and just remembering all of the things that i see my mom go through so that was well worth it for me today thank you again so much cheryl and you have a wonderful weekend everybody thank you so much for joining and you have a wonderful weekend as well and enjoy your family and remember this podcast is about helping heal and transform your life through the power of words and solutions. You heard it here on Break the Cycle with TC Knows.